find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. How's it going, guys? It's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 115. I am not Mike Sorg at Sorgatron. Uh, we'll get into why in a little bit, but I'm the other person that's usually on this show, and that's Eamon Payton at Eamon Tube Please, the voice some people call uh, for Inspired Pro Wrestling and the play-by-play commentator over there uh, uh, for Inspired Pro Wrestling out of Austin, Texas. Uh, usually, I am joined every week by uh, Mike Sorg, uh, video producer for Sorgatron Media, who... Does a lot of great stuff for uh, companies like IWC, RWA, various groups around the Pittsburgh area. Uh, he can't be on this week because some crazy stuff's happening in Sorbitron Media Studios. Uh, uh, the, the forces of the forces of nature have prevent Sorbitron Media Studios from broadcasting this week's events, but we are going to get it out to you anyways. Uh, so to help me with this uh, is uh, our co my co-host this week from our good friend in the mainstream media. Uh, and the writer of the Around the Indies column over at IndieWrestling.us, uh, Mr. Matt Carlins. Matt, how are you this evening? I am fantastic, Eamon. I'm certainly doing better than our friend Sorgatron is, who has somehow been blasted back into the Dark Ages. Um, but that's okay, because uh, now you and I get to spend a little quality time here together talking about independent professional wrestling. We do. We'll have a nice little conversation. We've got a few interviews that we'll be getting to. Uh, in a little while, but first I wanted to uh, point out to thank, to thank everyone who's checking us out uh, uh, this week's edition of the Indie Mayhem Show. I want to give a big shout out to Basic Sickness, uh, who provides the intro music. Uh, you can go check us, check them out at basicsickness.com. Uh, you can also check out everything that we do in the world of wrestling uh, over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. You can uh, if, uh, email us at goodtimesatwrestlingmayhemshow.com with the subject line Indie. Uh, if you want uh, to direct comments or thoughts or uh, interesting points or news or anything that you want uh, for us to talk about on the show, uh, you can also uh, give us a voicemail at 412-206-WMS0. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Mayhem Show. Uh, go like us on Facebook and also check out our Facebook group, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show, where we discuss all things professional wrestling and post funny news clips and video Stories. I mix those two up. Whatever. It's been a long night. Uh, <laughs> uh, if uh, hopefully you're listening to us either in video, or audio forms, you can check us out on YouTube, iTunes, and various other uh, podcasting platforms. Uh, and you can also join us live normally uh, every Tuesday night uh, at now around 9 p.m. Eastern time, uh, uh, or excuse me, 10 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, I get my time sounds confused. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, over at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, and, and yeah, go check us out over there. Uh, but uh, we're going to dive right into this. Uh, Matt Carlin, uh, I know you had a very eventful weekend, uh, particularly at uh, IWC's Night of the Superstars. Uh, we'll go into the event a bit more a little bit later in the show. But I know you had the pleasure of catching up with some very special people. Uh, uh, and, and getting a, uh, a bit of some exclusive interviews from that event. Yeah, um, yeah. We w- we want to thank the International Wrestling Cartel uh, and especially Justin Plummer for kind of opening their doors and uh, giving us a chance to get backstage and just basically run wild and try to gather up as many interviews as we possibly could. Uh, and this event was stacked. There are all sorts of big names there. There are all sorts of good names, lesser known names who are still really good guys and really. Uh, cool guys and awesome performers and everything like that. So um, we've got a bushel of interviews uh, to share with everybody, more than we could possibly share here on this one single Indie Mayhem show, but we're going to give you a little taste. We're going to share four of our interviews that Sorgatron and I did over the weekend up in Meadville. Uh, You're going to meet a wrestling lumberjack named uh, Lumberjack LaRue, a uh, a veteran of uh, Western PA independent scene. You're going to meet another veteran of uh, the independent scene in Western PA, luscious Rocky Reynolds. He and I go way back, and you'll hear more about that. You're going to hear from Bulk Nasty, who Sorgatron got a chance to talk to. But we begin with a truly legendary figure who is very kind uh, to give us just a few minutes of his time, and it was fun to talk to him and awesome to meet him. Let's hear from Scott 
Hall. All right, we're here with Scott Hall. Scott, um, welcome to Meadville. Hey, yo. <laughs> enjoy you. yourself, enjoy the crowd out there. Thank you. That's great. Kevin Nash was here last year, and he told me about this when I told him I was coming. He said, you're going to have a great time, and I'm having a great time. Now, last weekend, you're no doubt down in Texas doing the whole thing for WrestleMania. Sir. What was that like? It was unbelievable. Um, I mean, the WWE and WrestleMania is getting so huge that they take over the whole city for a week. And it was just a blast. And I got to tell you, I was front row at the NXT show. It's the hottest show in town. It's the, the, build, the building is vibrating with excitement. It's just, it's a good time to be a young pro wrestler. I mean, all these young cats out there have so much opportunity in front of them. It's, a, it's just a great time to be a pro wrestler. What really stood out for you at that NXT show? I think maybe the new cat who came in, Nakamura. Really, really exciting guy. I mean, it's just there's so much going on in wrestling just now. Right now, I wish I was about 25 years younger. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. Um, I, I was doing a little research trying to figure out the last time you had a match. It's been a little while, so yeah. when you're done, does that thought ever cross your mind? Well, maybe, you know? I mean, in the right situation, I could be convinced. <laughs> you know, I really think right now I'm, I'm trying to transition to make a living with the sport girl. Uh, my son is wrestling in Japan now. Uh, we're going to Europe and Japan, back and forth. Our goal, of course, everybody's goal is WWE. And I hope my dream would be to manage my son, Cody. Uh, you've seen so much wrestling over your lifetime, but I've got to think watching your own son has got to be a very different experience. Well, it's the, the funny part is, to him, I'm not Razor. I'm not that cool guy from the NWO. I'm dad. I made him eat his vegetables, take the trash out, make his bed. But I always told him, the better you get, the more I can help. So he's been in Japan for a year now. And now he now all of a sudden I'm, I'm that cool guy. So I'm really looking forward to what's coming down the road. High school years when I used to play you know, basketball and football I, uh, against his team. Still, but to be able to come back and do what you love as a, as a professional wrestler. You know, the old high school animosity is going. It's just cool to get to perform in front of people that you grew up with, you know, people that knew, end up knowing you from back in school and that knew you always wanted to be a pro wrestler. You can finally show them, hey, look, I'm here. Um, so, yeah, full disclosure time. Okay. Rocky Reynolds. <laughs> You're the first professional wrestler I ever interviewed. That's 14 awesome. years ago, <laughs> up in Erie, Pennsylvania. Yes. And uh, now you're happily retired and you just had a match. So yes, so yeah. How's, how's yeah. retirement working out for you? Retirement was good for about four months. And then, uh, well, actually, let me say, after about four minutes of it, I was all really starting to have withdrawals and that, you know, and I really, really wanted back in the ring. And I kind of knew then. I was going to be worse than Terry Funk because he's retired like 18 times and I knew I probably wasn't going to be able to keep retired. So, you know, um, but what I did, the main reason I did retire is mostly because of the fact that I have these two little girls that are six and eight now. And I'd be outside playing on a, on a nice sunny Saturday, then my ride would pull up and it's time to leave and I'd be missing an entire day with them getting, you know, and they're growing up so fast. So, I finally thought, I better get out of wrestling so I have more time. Well, then, well, that starts to drive me nuts, too. So I compromise with myself. I've weaned back a lot, and I'm only doing about six or seven shows per year. Then, you know, it's almost like a guy looking for his fix. This is my fix, you know? So when, I'm, when I miss the ring for a month or two, and I start to get the shakes, then I just go and I have a match, and my fix is there, and I'm calmed down. And I'm calmed down again for about another two months. I don't want to call you old, because clearly you're still young. Yeah. But have, have, on, yeah. have you gotten any advice from older wrestlers about maybe how to transition out of professional wrestling? And maybe have they given you any advice on how to handle this cold turkey versus weaning yourself off? How well, how to actually transition out? No, uh, but I've gotten several pieces of advice throughout the years on how to transition the order to get so that you can keep on doing it and you're not causing so much wear and tear to your body. Um, you know, like when you're first young and you watch stuff on television and you see them going through tables and jumping off of cages, you know, and you, you know, think, oh, hey, this is something I could possibly do, you know? <laughs> so when you're young, you're more in mortal in your mind. Uh, so you're willing to go out there and you do the more crazy stuff and you will learn real quick. And, uh, and when I first got in, I was doing the more high flying flips and twists. And the older guys, the vets would pull me off to the side after a match and say, hey, listen, that's good, but you can't do that all the time. You're gonna have a short career. You're breaking your body down. And you don't wanna do all of your stuff in 
in one match. You want to be able to space it out so when they come back to the town next time, you can show them something that they haven't seen yet. You know, so then, uh, and then as time goes on, they teach you. You don't have to do as many moves. It's more about psychology and telling the story in that way than it is about going out there and killing your body. The older you get, the better, the less you have to do. Um, we ask this question to everybody on the show. Um, what's your first memory of watching professional wrestling? Oh, I can exactly. It was the first thing I saw. It, it hooked, it up, hooked at me, and I remember it scared the living heck out of me, too. I was a little kid. I was watching Georgia Championship Wrestling on TBS at like 6.05. They never came on at like 6.05. It was 6.05. But um, this big heavyset guy with a Texan accent went in the ring by the name of Dusty Rhodes and he was in a big white dress shirt and he was running his mouth to these two big guys that had these shoulder pads with these huge spikes known as the Road Warriors. Well they came out and they jumped Dusty Rhodes but while they were actually beating him they went over and took one of the spikes off of their shoulder pads. They held him down and they cut his eye and he was actually cut and blood poured down his face soaked his entire white dress, dress shirt and the and the camera zoomed in on his face, covered in blood, in a crimson mask, and the uh, announcer was just screaming, oh my god, he's going to lose his eye, and then the show ended. And I sat there as like a little kid, and I thought, what the heck was that? You know, uh, yeah, so then, uh, and then I was hooked. Right? You know, it's it's right amazing then. how many wrestling fans, I kind of have a similar memory too, one of my first memories of watching professional wrestling is something that's blood. I mean, it's amazing yes. how that sticks with you. Oh, yeah. You don't get it as much anymore, but, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> what's the best thing about independent wrestling, and what's the worst thing about independent wrestling? Oh, oh, easily the best thing is how close you are with the fans, which is great, because in, when, you're out, when you're on the big level, not like I've been there too too often, but when you're on the bigger level, you're not as close with the fans. You know, you can't just interact with them. And you'll hear a lot of the legends that were once stars that are doing the independence now talk about how, what they love about the indie circuit is how they can now get one-on-one -on -one with with the fans. So the interaction's the best. The absolute worst, well, it's the best. You know, yeah, because you know, you go out there and uh, you're only worth as much as your name brings, uh, as, uh, as much as your name brings fans to the show. So if they put my name or my face on the show, depending on how many fans that's going to draw is how much I can uh, negotiate for. So if you're not a very big star on the independent circuit, you know, you're going to be getting paid much. So there's guys. I remember when I first started out, I drive four and a half hours in just one direction. I'd be lucky to get paid 25 bucks. That's part of it. You got to learn to pay the dues. And uh, it's not un it's not until you've paid those dues for a few years and build a fan base up and put in the hard work that you might start making some cash and actually have a plus when you come home in the financial <laughs> department. But for those first few years now, nah, you're paying everything out of your own pocket. It's all about the love. Um, I want to give you a chance to tell everybody how they can keep up with what you're doing and what you're not doing now that you're retired. And I especially want you to mention that you wrote a book. Yeah, well, number two, cool. number two is in the editing process right now. Um, yeah, here's what the thing. What made you decide to write a book? Yeah, I'm not smart. I'm not a very smart guy. I can't write books. I can tell pretty good stories. That's what I think. I'm just a, like a little s short, stuttering midget. That's what I am. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah, because I almost qualified for the midget wrestling. Luckily, they've been letting me wrestle with the big guys, you know. So I go for the knees and the ankles. But um, it was probably about three or four years ago, I started reading wrestlers' autobiographies and reading the stories of how they all started out and um, realizing how much they relate to how I Start out, you know, it, that, that's kind of what started drawing drawing my attention to these autobiographies, and I started liking them. So I got to the point I was reading three or four of them per month. Um, so then, after about a couple years years of this, and I have a huge collection of them now. I'm actually just starting Dusty Rhodes right now. Um, after going through them for so many years, I thought, you know, I have a lot of stories, and I and I bet I could write a book, and uh, I could make it sell. So I actually wrote it. We got it published. It's being sold nationwide. You can buy it on Amazon.com. It's on BarnesandNoble.com. Uh, you know, and then um, and that was on my career from how I got into pro professional wrestling to the four times I won the NWA World Junior Heavyweight title. But then the second book now, which is kind of a, it's kind of weird to talk about now, but I spent two years journaling after every one of my matches leading up to the day I retired for months ago and made that long stay from the business of a total of four months. <laughs> but yeah, but no, um, it's a, I really get bare and I just let it all go in that book because there's a lot of emotions I didn't realize I was letting out so I'm, I began proofreading this book. But um, it was not an easy thing 
to even convince myself four months ago that I needed to get out. And I battled back and forth then, and I'm going all through the book back and forth. Should I? Sh should I not? These are the pros. These are the cons. And yeah, it's a constant battle. That's amazing. I can't wait to uh, see how that turns out for you. Where are you on Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff oh, where folks want to find you? Twitter, I'm not very smart about it. I don't ever get on Twitter. But Facebook, I'm on there constantly. There is a uh, Luscious Rocky Reynolds Facebook page, and there's also a like page for my first book, uh, Luscious, the story of four-time NWA World Junior Heavyweight Champion Rocky Reynolds. Awesome. Well, everybody check that out, Rocky. Yes. Awesome catching up hey, with you again. Thank you good again. luck. Enjoy retirement. Oh, yes. Definitely. So far, about another two minutes. Uh, Sorg here, it's after uh, IWC's Night of the Superstars, and I'm here with the one, the only, the Bulk Nasty. How you doing, sir? Good, how about you? All right, you're, you've been around well, about a year, right? Like here, I think months, officially, yeah. for eight months, okay. And you had um, uh, you had a, a pretty big night out there with Scotty Too Hot, Scotty Too Hotty, and what were you tonight? Too cool? No. <laughs> Bulk, Bulk Kishi, wasn't Bulk it? Kishi, yes, 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 yes. So, so you've had a few uh, big moments here uh, in the in the last uh, few months uh, since you've been with IWC. Um, what was it like kind of hanging with uh, Scotty Chihadi there? It was uh, it was pretty cool, you know. I watched, grew up watching him on TV and everything, mm -hmm. and then uh, him out there tagging with him. I was glad to make the dance. That's all. That's awesome. I'm glad I did. That's awesome. That's awesome. This is also, I believe, uh, the biggest crowd of the year, typically here up in Meadville. Yeah. What's like to perform in front of that many people? Uh, it's pretty crazy, you know. I wrestled with, uh, a couple weekends ago in front of 20 people, and I wonder with you know, almost a thousand, if not more. So it's definitely surreal. It's like. I can't believe I'm out there sometimes. Like, uh, I got to myself make sure I'm not dreaming. So, I mean, you're here, you're a wrestling fan, of course. A lot of, a lot of times we like to ask, what's, what's kind of the first thing you, that got you into wrestling? Like, what's your earliest kind of memory that, that got you into this stuff? Uh, it was uh, my older brother. I used to watch it with him. And the first match I remember watching was the Dudleys, Edge and Christian, the Hardys at, uh, well, I think it was WrestleMania 17, maybe, or something. And it was, uh, I was like, because I was always drawn to like larger than life people and like real big guys. I'm like, you know, they're out there big, they're jumping off of things, and you know, you have 80,000 people freaking out. It's like, it might be a good job one day. Does that mean that we're going to see you in a ladder match sooner or later? Uh, no. No. Uh, are, you, are you are you the typical like me and my other tall friends that we're all afraid of heights? Absolutely. Three step roll. Yeah, three step roll. Exactly. Okay, three step roll. Yeah, absolutely. It, even even the bulk is about it too. Um, so so from there, of course, you know, Man of Superstars. There's a lot of stars that you saw. You you mentioned you know WrestleMania. There's a lot of people here that were in WrestleMania just a week ago. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred thousand yeah. people. Booker T, uh, Tatanka, and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, who was kind of like who's who's, who's the guy that you kind of geeked out a little bit to see tonight? Geeked out for? Yeah, a little bit like like uh, that guy. Yeah. I had to say it was Scott Hall, I think. Scott Hall? Yeah, just because it was, uh, they say don't meet your heroes, but I meet him, and it's exactly what you think you're going to get. It's, it's, you know, he is Scott Hall. It is the good years, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like five years ago, it might have been a little different story. Yeah, but... even then, it might have been awesome, but still, it was pretty cool to meet him. He was real, real friendly and real, uh, real down to awesome. 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 Tell you what, short career here so far, but what is the he's best and the worst thing about uh, uh, being in indie wrestling so far for you? Best and the worst thing? best is entertaining the good fans, and the worst is dealing with the smart marks. Oh, I bet. I bet they're, they're probably, they're probably oh, tough yeah. on you. Uh, yeah? A little bit. They hate the fat guys, like I said. <laughs> Can the gym. Like, yeah, sorry, I can't do the 450. Yeah, yeah, not yet. Not, not yet. Not like, yet. You know, if we had Kevin Nash here again, he could teach it because he used to help with the, the X Division, right? Mm -hmm. you know, exactly. He knows it. He knows it. All right, uh, so real quick, where can people find you online? Uh, at Facebook, it looks good, Bulk Nasty. And then for Twitter, it'll be Bulk Nash at IWC. There you go. Thanks a lot for joining us, man. Oh, thank you. All right, we're here at Night of the Superstars in Meadville with Lumberjack LaRue. Um, just came off a very exciting free show match. It was, it was thrilling to watch out there. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. And the guys from out here in Meadville, the fans here, spectacular. I mean, working for IWC and being able to get in the ring with some of these guys is a, is a great uh, a great thing for all of us. I mean, it's, a, it's great talent all the way up, uh, all the way up the East Coast for these guys, and it's it's a great time here in Meadville, PA. So appreciate you guys having us. Um, we like to ask um, people that we have on the Indie Mayhem show some of these uh, basic questions about the kind of like how you got into wrestling. So can you give us like maybe your earliest memory of watching professional wrestling? The earliest memory of watching professional wrestling, I swear to God, and, and, and I'll never forget it. I was sitting in my in my uh, living room. It was 1983, okay, and 
bought, I, I turned on wrestling for the first time on the TV, and my dad said, oh, okay, let's watch this. And I said, all right, this is great. And out comes Bob Backlund and the Iron Sheik. I swear, I mean, I'm telling you right now, I, have to, I, I, watched, I watched it change because the Iron Sheik, of course, beat Bob Backlund, and, you know, we wanted to kill him. And then we need to tune in for the next week, and the next week when it came out, guess what started? <laughs> It was January of 1990, or yeah, January of 84. What happened? Right? Right. Here comes Hogan. That's what. So those are my first, my first, uh, my first times ever watching professional wrestling. First two weeks in a row. So. You mentioned briefly here in the hallway that uh, when you had your very first match over a decade ago, it was uh, against yeah, it's, it's against the Monster of This. That's a heck of a way to break in. That's a heck of a way to break in. He took me out of the game. He gave me the black hole slam. Twice. And I tell you what, I, I thought he built my back in him, so it was, it, was, uh, it was definitely a way to come into the business, and I love it. And ever since then, you know, it's, it's great to go from town to town to town and enjoy the, enjoy the crowd, so. The crowd loved you out there. They were going crazy for you. What's it like to, to hear them all in my like that? Oh, it's the adrenaline. I mean, when the adrenaline wears off, you'll find me in the corner Bro. taking a nap. Bro. It's, it's so exciting when you walk out through the curtain and they go bananas for you. You know, so that's the, that's what you do. Of course, the Miz has Janice and you have your... This guy right here. I don't have, I have a name for this guy. I got my old friend Blue here. This is what I call her. This is my old friend Blue. And I tell you what, he helps out. Helps out a lot in some situations. You have to see the night. Through a, through a bullet hole. I say, well, Blue here took care of it for me. So. Uh, hopefully, you've never had to offensively use this in a match or two. I've never, I've never personally used it myself, but some people have gotten it from me and used it on me. So. Unfortunately, you get the, get the other end of it if, if you don't watch. So, the shows that you're involved in, uh, kind of, what are you watching? What are you checking out when it comes to professional wrestling? My kids, my kids are really into it. I really watch everything that's on TV. It's one of those things that's a pastime for the for the family. We make sure it gets passed down to generations, and that's how we continue to have fans. So, and this is something we always ask people on this show: What's the best thing about independent wrestling, and what's the worst thing? The best thing about independent wrestling is when you find a venue that has a shower, and you can and you can shower before you hit the car. The worst thing about independent wrestling, like any other level of wrestling, is missing time with your family. So that's the. And, but my family is able to come with me at shows like this, so it's it's fun. You know? uh, well, we're gonna let you get to the showers. Um, just one more question, if you got any way uh, for people to check out what you're into, social media, anything like that, where people can check out your stuff and keep up with your uh, your yeah, you can actually get on. Uh, on Facebook, there in the social media, my kids help me with that. You know, I'm older, so they, they do help me with the, with the social media things. So you can get me on Facebook, I'm, I'm Jack with Lou, or you can you can get on uh, uh, some different websites for some of the different federations that I work for. You know, PWR, you know, you can get on their website, and you know, they can always tell you where we're going to be at. All right, well, thanks a lot. Hit the showers, and uh, good luck down the road. Matt, thank you very much, and thank you very much. Okay, guys, have a good night. The first time I met the Mayhem was at uh, Pod Camp One, the, the very first one. That's why they call it Pod Camp One. It was later in the afternoon. I think it was two. I think it was two days then. Yeah, it was two days. And it was uh, later in the day on Saturday, and Kanaki sees myself and Sick Puppy walking around. And he goes, "You know what? I've got some guys you need to meet. They're down in the basement." And we're like, okay, well, already the beer guys are being sent downstairs. This figures, but whatever. So we go downstairs, and he goes, go in here and uh, hang out with these guys. And it was the wrestling guys. We're like, wrestling, sure, we'll, we'll check this out. And when we went in, we were the only two in there. And there, Sorg has a video of this. My big bald head is, like, right in front of the camera, down front, next to Sick Puppy. And little did we know, the whole thing filled up really quick. Uh, so we sat through the session, and we got the guys to uh, basically just kick the tar out of each other. They did... Uh, a kick to the face, I hit it with a chair, a few other things. So that was my first uh, real interaction with the Mayhem guys. And we bonded ever since because we figured wrestling, beer, beer, wrestling, yeah, it kind of goes together. And those were some fantastic interviews that uh, Matt and Sorg were able to pick up uh, this past weekend at IWC Night, the superstars of our Meadville PA. Um, uh, like uh, Matt Collins has mentioned, we have plenty more interviews to come in upcoming weeks uh, of the Indie Mayhem show. 
uh, Matt, a few of the names, because uh, you got to talk with a lot of people uh, uh, from this past yeah. weekend's events. Uh, what, what, what are some names that people could be looking forward to? Um, you, you know, all right. We got uh, a chance to talk to Booker T um, at the show, so we're going to have that interview coming up for you soon. Um, he was super cool. And uh, I also got a chance to talk with Deanna Parazzo, uh, perhaps the most well-traveled and most busy woman in independent professional wrestling right now. Um, it's hard to avoid seeing her name anytime you're gathering up stuff on the indies, which I do uh, every weekend for the Around the Indies column. <laughs> um, so it was cool to catch up with her um, after seeing her name countless, 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 countless times, of course, seeing her on TV and stuff. So fun talks with all those folks and a bunch of other folks uh, uh, that you'll be able to hear from. So lots to look forward to. And, and again, thanks to all those guys and thanks to IWC and Justin Plummer for hooking us up and giving us access and, uh, uh, I was very pleased that I was never thrown out of the backstage at any point. Um, <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, you know, when you're back there, at least for me, I'm erring so far on the side of caution that I'm like <laughs> probably being overly cautious. But uh, you know, it's not my turf, so uh, well, I, try well, well, you got, I try to know. Um, you know, go as we say, you got those mainstream media credentials. I mean, come on. Well, I I got yes, I do have mainstream media experience and. Uh, and I got the chops of having interviewed, you know, countless human beings over my uh, lifetime so I could bring it to you in the world of television news. But, uh, you know, it's a very um, a very different place when you're backstage at a professional wrestling show for an extended period of time like I was. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of a first for me. I'd never – I've been backstage before, but I've never been backstage for, like, that long and just allowed to just roam free and just kind of, like – talk to people and say hi and overhear things and just kind of interact with people. And um, it, it was really a crazy, um, very super cool experience. And uh, it only enhanced my love for professional wrestling, just seeing the way um, people interact and the way people, it, just the way people help each other was, was yeah. pretty amazing yeah. to me. Um, the way guys are sharing what they know with, with others, you know, no matter how, experienced or inexperienced you know if somebody knows something they're sharing it with the other guy and and they're asking questions it was just it's such, such a cool um such a cool environment it's not just let's go put on a show you know it's like it's like every moment out there is a learning experience for a lot of these guys even guys who have been around for a decade or, or more you know it's a craft that you know i don't think anyone ever truly masters so it's really interesting to see people just kind of constantly sharing information and and uh, interacting and uh, I mean the legends are you know just so cool you know I mean obviously they've been around for a long time they know how to, they know how to treat people so uh, just a lot of cool guys and a lot of uh, cool interactions and uh, hey if you're at the show and I didn't get a chance to say hi to you or I didn't get a chance to you know get you on camera it's because you know either either a I was scared of you because you, you know you look like you're really in the zone and super intense or uh, it just looked maybe like it wasn't the right time you know that's part of my job as a mainstream media <laughs> guy is kind of know when to approach and kind of want to know when to let it go. Um, but um, hopefully we can catch up with uh, those guys that we didn't get down the line sometime because it was a lot of fun. Hopefully uh, I get a chance to do it again because uh, it was a very, very cool experience. Definitely. I, I, I can attest to that from the little time I've ever spent in a wrestling locker room. It's, it's, it, or at least even – behind the scenes of a wrestling show. Like it's very kind of communal in a sense. Um, which I think is really cool because I think that's the side of wrestling a lot of people don't normally really get to see. So definitely very cool to hear. Um, but yeah, uh, and uh, from the way Silver Charm Media normally goes, you may be able to check out IWC Night of the Superstars uh, uh, on uh, uh, DVD or digital download very soon uh, over at uh, uh, silvercharmmedia.com uh, and indiewrestling.us. So, uh, yeah, definitely go uh, check out and support uh, independent wrestling. Uh, not just the ones that we uh, work for, in, but for all independent wrestling, all the types of different shows that Matt Carlin's covers in a little, seg in a little segment, <laughs> a little uh, article called Around the Indies every week over at IndieWrestling.us. Uh, uh, a lot of cool stuff that uh, I, I know it's a very busy weekend for indie wrestling. A lot of cool stuff that uh, you've, you covered on this week's uh, edition. Yeah, I, I kind of expected things to kind of like cool off after WrestleMania weekend, but they did not yeah. cool off. Um, it was crazy. Um, and as far as Night of the Superstars goes in Meadville, I mean, it was a really fun show. I didn't get to see every single match because of 
my wandering around backstage, but uh, some of the stuff I saw in ring was was really amazing. There was a, there was a monsters ball match um, <laughs> between Abyss and uh, and a fellow by the name of John Boland, who I I don't think I've ever seen before. Um, and uh, it, this match featured uh, perhaps the most stubborn toughest table you've ever seen in your life <laughs> five or six tries to put this table out of commission and uh it's i, I just you know it's amazing it's amazing how and, and we kind of started to see this lately um we had a good example of it on uh on wwe raw um a couple weeks back where a tables match with the dudleys and the usos just went off the rails because they rang the bell too soon <laughs> but oh, but ray dudley has been doing this for God knows how long. So he just knows what to do. And so, you know, when you've got when you've got Abyss who has done how many monsters ball matches, how many hardcore matches has Abyss done? If a right. table's not gonna break, Abyss knows what the fuck to do, you know? Right. He's got it under control. So it's just it's it's always interesting to see, you know, them, them handle that like it's no big deal, you know. Super cool stuff. Absolutely. Uh, uh, obviously, you mentioned IBC and I, the superstars. Uh, uh, just running down some of the stuff that uh, was in this week's column. Uh, I know uh, AAW out of Chicago, which is a name I always see pop up. Uh, uh, oh, that's yeah. doing spectacular stuff. Had a pretty great event. Uh, their, excuse me, the 12-year anniversary event um, on Saturday, uh, with the main event being Tommaso Ciampa taking on Zack Sabre Jr., who, uh, you know, coming off of a weekend where I get to see Zack Sabre Jr. a, couple, a handful of times, I'm, I'm, I'm I, 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 I'm on a Zack Sabre kick, I guess, so to speak, because, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very – obviously, I mean, those two, two very talented guys, two guys who we – I guess what we now know will be in the uh, Global Cruiserweight Theory, so that's cool to – definitely cool to see. Um, yeah, so maybe, they, they'll, maybe they'll get together because, um, I mean, everyone knows how great Zack Sabre Jr. is. I, I've grown to appreciate Tommaso Ciampa so much more over the last, you know, 12 months or so. Um, every time he's been on TV, especially in NXT, has just been like jumping off the screen. He's just so cool and so intense. It's it's so much fun to watch him. Definitely, absolutely. Uh, AIW also had an event this past weekend uh, that uh, also featured Booker T, uh, to my knowledge, uh, and uh, had a, a great series of matches. AIW is one of those groups that's uh, really always delivering high quality stuff, and, and it's cool to see um, they're building obviously to Absolution, which is their big event in June. Uh, so uh, definitely good to keep up with them over there. Um, yeah. Uh, and apparently there was a great match on that um, AIW show between uh, Facade and Joey Janela. And, and we got a couple clips on the Around the Indies um, column where they're doing some extra special stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, so hopefully you guys get a chance to check that one out. And I'm sure there were a bunch of other great matches on that one too. Definitely. Uh, but yeah, yeah, like you were saying, yeah, Combat Zone was doing the best of the best tournament. Which I think um, is a, that's a, one of the, I think, one of the longest standing tournaments uh, in, in the indie world as far as like finding the next guy and the next young up and coming guy. So uh, that's definitely a good one to always look out for. I know Jonathan Gresham won that, uh, the tournament this year, which is very cool to see. I've seen Gresham once before live, and he's a fantastic talent. So. Um, very cool to see. Uh, just a couple others I want to mention was um, uh, a new promotion that had their first ever show uh, this uh, this Sunday, with, this past Sunday in Providence, Rhode Island, which was Women's Wrestling Revolution, uh, which is kind of a women's subsect of, uh, uh, well, it's booked by the same people that book uh, Beyond Wrestling. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was very cool to see. You mentioned Deanna Perrazzo uh, was in the main event being Santana Garrett uh, in a really great match, and it looks like they'll be coming back uh uh, they're, they're, it seems like they'll be running every couple months or so, which is cool to see. It's good to have another uh, place out there for indie wrestling, uh, uh, for women in particular in indie wrestling to kind of play their craft. We're in like the golden age of women's indie wrestling, women's wrestling period at this point. It just gets right. bigger and bigger. Um, and, and I and I, I think I saw um, uh, AIW's, uh, um, I, think it, I think they're doing a women's wrestler, women's only, uh, show coming up soon too, so that that's says a lot. Whenever you could promote a show where it's all women um, and still get away with it, and I see Eamon has decided to depart me one more time. That's okay. He's gonna jump right back on here in a minute, and I am gonna let you guys know uh, as soon as I scroll past my international wrestling cartel. Um, 
right up here. Ah, yes. Um, we had, um, not too far away from where we are here in western Pennsylvania, uh, over in Marietta, Ohio, uh, Remix Pro um, had an event on Saturday, the Throwdown for the Pound, and um, one of the uh, interesting tag teams, uh, a really cool combination of uh, Fasada and Matt Hardy. Um, they actually, unfortunately, for them at least, uh, they lost their Remix Pro tag team title. Um, after actually successfully defending it once, then they lost it in the always treacherous second match of the evening. You always got to watch out for that second match of the evening when you're defending the title. Um, Eamon, are you back on the line with me now? Uh, I think I'm back audio-wise. I hear your voice. That'll work. That's good enough for me for now. <laughs> I'm going to put the camera on you then. <laughs> <laughs> I was just telling everybody about it, uh, Remix Pro real quick while we were just kind of like shuffling through the around the Indies column. Hey, um, also, um, congratulations to... Uh, uh, I'm sure a lot of people's favorites. Ethan Carter III um, won the uh, main title in House of Glory up in New York over yeah. the weekend, too. Um, so good job by you, EC3. Um, Eamon, if you're, you're still there. Are you still there? Okay, great. Um, I know that um, down in Texas, you guys are gearing up on in, uh, Inspire Pro for uh, – another big event coming up here in maybe uh, less than two weeks. Am I right yep. on that? Yep. Uh, it will be not this coming Sunday, but next Sunday. Uh, we'll be have our big uh, Splendor in the Smash event, which uh, I'm very excited to uh, be holding. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff uh, coming up in the Pipeworks for uh, Inspire Pro that I hopefully uh, we'll get to announce eventually. Um, uh, and I'm very excited about a lot of, a lot of really cool stuff in the works. Um, and, and, yeah, I think uh, – I, I'm, I'm very excited to see where this year kind of goes for us. Um, uh, it seems to have started off really well, so I'm very excited to see where, how things kind of develop and move forward. So, then, yeah, they'll be uh, on Sunday the 24th. Uh, so if you're around the Austin area, you can go check me out uh, doing the commentary thing over there and go see what we're doing over in Austin. And I'm going to take this opportunity to mention a couple of other upcoming events that are coming uh, down the pike here in Western Pennsylvania. Um, I believe, if I'm reading this correctly, and I do not all, all the details on exactly what he's doing, but Rob Van Dam is coming to Connellsville, and uh, it looks like he's going to do some stand-up comedy, Eamon. And I know you're going to love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's going to do this event for Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Um, and it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a special stand-up comedy event with Rob Van Dam down at the cinema. In Connellsville, Pennsylvania. Um, oh, by the way, um, for mature audiences only. So uh, you guys watch out for that whenever you get into that. Keep in mind. Sorry. I got a feeling RVD's got some fun things to talk about. <laughs> um, and also, um, the Renegade Wrestling Alliance is going to be holding their Spring Fling coming up on Saturday night, starting at 7 o'clock in West Newton. The beautiful West Newton Gymnasium. I'm going to see if I can find a couple of the uh, matches that are coming up on this uh, card here. Oh, I think I do have a couple of them. Oh, this is a one heck of a detailed right up here, Amy. Um, looks like Sanjay Dutt will be back, uh, which is always a good sign. Uh, he's always popping up at the RWA shows and uh, always getting the crowd going out there at beautiful West Newton. So that's something to look forward to this weekend. If you need to get your wrestling fix going, uh, go down the check out RWA in West Newton, PA. Um, it is a lot of fun. It is a really fun crowd. Um, and uh, it's, uh, I'm sure for a lot of people who go, it's wrestling the way wrestling was meant to be. So uh, it's always a good time down there. Absolutely. Uh, so definitely go, uh, go check out, as we mentioned every week, go check out any local indie that is around the area that you see happening because uh, it's always great to support your local independent wrestling talents. Go, uh, go support them. Go give them your time. Go give them your money. So uh, <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, always, always give them your money. I, I'm, that's more. <laughs> always give. That's, that's a very important aspect of it. Definitely. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a that's uh, all we got this week here for the uh, uh, Indie Mayhem show. Thank you again, Matt Carlins, uh, for for all the inclement stuff that's happened this uh, tonight for joining us this week. Well, you know, Amen. Last stream standing. That's me. So, <laughs> Jesus. I guess I win. <laughs> Mac, you you win tonight. You you win you win it all. Um, but yeah, uh, this has been uh, the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, you can go check out. Uh, well, first of all, you can follow me on Twitter at Amon Two, please, uh, and check out Inspire Pro Wrestling at Inspire Pro Res. Matt, where can they find you? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Mainstream Matt. 
with one T and uh, go to IndieWrestling.us and uh, you can check out uh, my Around the Indies column um, where we give you a, a look at what's going on around the Indies. This is the way to do it, folks, because, you know, it's not just words. Wrestling is pictures. It's video. It's <laughs> moving. It's emotions. You can't, you don't learn anything about wrestling just by looking at words. Words are boring. Look at pictures. Look at tweets. Look at moving video. That's the way to do it. So that's what we try to do on the Around the Indies column. We try to give you a taste, give you a flavor of the action that you're missing by sitting at home on a Saturday or a Friday night and not going out and supporting your local indie. Um, so check that out. It's a lot of fun. And uh, I enjoy putting it together, even on days where uh, it's hard to find the results to some of the shows. But you know what? That's a minor gripe. Absolutely. Um, and, and my video back, which is great. Yay, technology. Yeah, um, but yeah, you can go uh, check us out at, as I said, at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, go uh, send us an email to uh, GoodTimesOfWrestlingMayhemShow.com if you've got any indie news, if you've got anything you think we should talk about. If you've got someone who you have connections with that you think we should interview and talk to you, uh, go uh, check us out, at, uh, or go email that to us at goodtemptofwrestlingmayhemshow.com or uh, drop us a voicemail at 412-206-WMS0. Uh, once again, big thank you to Basic Sickness for the intro music, uh, and, and thank you to everyone who's been uh, listening and watching to us. Go subscribe to us on iTunes, on YouTube. Uh, go leave some cool comments if you, like, if you dig what you're listening to or seeing. Uh, and yeah, uh, we'll be back next week. Sorg in, Sorg in force, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> Uh, please back sorry, and stronger than ever. Please sorg help me. Uh, and <laughs> and uh, yeah, this has been uh, the Indie Mayhem Show. Go check out some indie wrestling. Oh. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.